Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today, I want to talk about how to prep your tracks for the mastering process. This is going to be a two-parter this week, all about how to prep your tracks so they are ready and optimized for mastering. And then next week, we'll talk about some of the typical processors, best practices, etc. There's a lot of questions revolving around this process of mastering. I've received many of them, and I know there are a lot of engineers out there who have to have a back and forth conversation consistently with folks that don't optimize their bounces. So I want to dig through this. This is going to be rapid fire as there's a lot I want to cover. So let's just dig right in. I have a session here that is ready to be mastered. The client is happy with the mix. I'm happy with the mix. So what do I need to do to make sure this is ready for my mastering engineer as I send it out? Whether you yourself are mastering your tracks, a separate mastering engineer, or an automated service like Lander, I'm not judging. So first things first, I'm going to go look at my stereo output as I typically add processors to my stereo output. In this case, I use what is called a submix. You don't have to use this. Just imagine it is the stereo output. That's all you need to know. It's just a aux channel before the main stereo output that I've sent all of my tracks to. So let's take a look. I have a limiter. I have a compressor. I also have some tape saturation and even an EQ. So this is important to point out. First things first, if you are using any sort of limiting on your project, you're going to want to bypass, most likely completely remove it. The reason is because Limiting prevents you or your mastering engineer the opportunity to further fine tune this project. Limiting squashes a track. It removes dynamic range. It removes the opportunity for further processing. This is not good for anybody. Now, of course, you're welcome to use a limiter while you're mixing. If you want to sort of emulate what the final product will sound like through a limiter, that's a okay. When I send tracks to clients, I send them a track with faux mastering, as you can see, because if they're listening to my mix and then comparing it against tracks that they really like, and there's this massive difference in volume, they're not going to be able to wrap their heads around whether or not the mix is good. You know, they, they need it to be comparably loud to what they're used to. But for the mastering engineer, he or she does not. So we got to remove that. From there, let's take a listen to this project and just examine the peak meter here and what it's doing. Do all the things my heart's been. Okay, so we can see that the meter is hanging around negative 2.1 at its loudest. There's probably a good chance somewhere else in this track it's a little louder. We want to make sure that our track never hits zero decibels on the peak meter or above, as in in the red, plus one, plus two, plus infinity. This is bad because what will happen is, is our track will be digitally distorted, as in degraded, because... Logic can only bounce out at zero decibels, so it's going to have to chop everything above off. Once again, reducing dynamic range, degrading the signal. This is not good for anybody. So what most people don't know when it comes to Logic, and you can even read it in the Logic manual itself, you could literally be clipping every single track and bus in your session. But as long as the stereo output is not clipping, you're good to go. This is a non real life scenario. You can get a little crazy with your mix. You just got to make sure to reduce the volume for the mastering engineer or mastering process. The easiest way to do this is just throw a gain plug in on the last slot of your channel strip on your stereo output and just drive this signal down. It's that simple. Now, of course, we could talk about gain staging and I have a whole video all about gain staging and logic. But all you need to know is bring the volume down with a gain plugin last in line in your plugin chain on your stereo output, and you'll be good to go. From there, we have to discuss some of the processing that I have on my track. So I have a little bit of EQ. I have some tape saturation, compression. Now, in the case that you have bus processing or stereo output processing, I suggest bouncing two versions. One with your processing that you have employed on your stereo output and another without anything on it. So bypassing and then bouncing it. 
The reason is because we want to give our mastering engineer the opportunity to pick which version works best for them. This can be kind of controversial. A lot of mastering engineers do not want you to add processing to your stereo output because there's the opportunity for overprocessing. If someone is particularly heavy handed with processing their stereo output, it's just not going to sound better with further processing from another engineer. However, sometimes the processing that you employ is a huge part of the sound of your mix. In this particular case, when I sent this track to my mastering engineer, he chose to keep that processing on there. So he kept the one with this processing as he felt that was the case. Just give your mastering engineer or yourself or Lander, whatever you're using, the opportunity to pick. In the case of Lander, you would run both versions through and decide which one you like best. From here, we're going to dig into the bounce dialog. So with Command-B, I'm now opening bounce to export this track to send away to a client or to my mastering engineer, whoever. We have a variety of options to choose from, but I'm going to stick to PCM. Within PCM, we have the option for file format. I always choose WAVE. WAVE, in my opinion, is the best scenario while AIFF and CAF are reasonable options. WAVE is the most universal file type that just about any program that reads audio can handle it and read it effectively. So stick with WAVE. Resolution, always 24-bit as it provides the most resolution for your track. 16-bit is really specific to the last and final stage of bouncing out your track after it's been mastered. 32-bit float, while there's a tremendous amount of resolution, it's kind of like a non-real-world scenario. Some programs don't do 32-bit float, some do. So I just stick to 24-bit. It's more than enough. It tends to be the standard. Sample rate, you always want your sample rate for your bounce to match the sample rate of your project. In this case, it's 44.1. If you're doing 48K, if you're doing 96K, just pick that particular sample rate that your project was set at when you created this project. File type. I always stick with interleave to create a single stereo product. In the case of split, it provides us with a left and right channel, but it's just not really necessary. So interleaved. Dithering, absolutely not. Dithering is employed at the very, very, very last stage of the mastering process. Because when you have a 24-bit file at 48K and the mastering engineer has done their thing, they're going to bounce it out at 16-bit 44.1. There's going to be a bit of degradation occurring. And so we use dither. It's a layer of noise to sort of obscure or randomize that degradation. This is only employed at the very last stage of mastering. From here, we have two modes, real-time or offline. Real-time, when you hit OK and you hit bounce, Logic will literally play your track from beginning to end and then create a stereo track from that. It's sort of like recording it. This can be really handy. A lot of people like to quote unquote print their tracks, which is this real-time bounce. So they sit back, they're listening to the print or the real-time bounce, and they're just double checking, making sure everything sounds good. It's a good way to just catch anything that you missed. The problem with real time is if your system is being burdened with system overloads because there's a lot of processing going on, your bounce will also succumb to system overload. So that's a real problem. Offline bounce is different. Logic instead will mathematically take all the information in your mix and produce a stereo track, which is really helpful because it's much faster and it does not succumb to system overloads because it doesn't have to play your track in real time with all the processing. Some people get a little weird about offline bouncing. I prefer it, but you will definitely want to double check your final bounce before you send it out just because you don't get that chance to double check it since it's not playing in real time. Finally, we have normalize. Do not ever use normalize. What normalization does is it takes your track, it finds the loudest peak, and it says, okay, this is the loudest peak. Let's pin it to zero decibels. Again, reducing dynamic range, you know, essentially clipping your it's not clipping your track but it's pinning your track to the top of the meter so now your mastering engineer doesn't have as much room or ability to fine-tune your mix there is the option of overload protection which can be helpful if your track is peaking or clipping your meters logic will identify that and reduce it down to zero decibels but again really the best option place the game plugin on the stereo output drive down the volume you'll be good to go and from there we would hit okay i'm not going to bounce this out I do want to cover one more thing, and that is exporting stems. Some engineers prefer stem mixing and mastering because it gives them a little more room and freedom to 
further fine tune or process your tracks. So if you have a mix that doesn't sound amazing, they have the opportunity to fine tune the drums or the vocals separately from the rest. So in this particular case, I have track stacks for all my major groups. You can see drum, bass, guitars, vocals. So in this case, I would export these groups. Two things to note when it comes to exporting stems. Number one, any processing that you have on your stereo output will not be imparted on your stems. I know that's kind of a bummer. It just doesn't run through the output the same way. It's only accounting for any plugins and processing on the stems that you're exporting. I don't suggest dragging these and dropping them onto each instrument group because these processors were fine tuned with the idea of the whole mix in mind. They're gonna respond differently to just the drums or just the bass. So I know it's in perfect system. It is what it is. The other thing to know is any aux channels that you've set up with sends and buses for reverb, delay, etc. You wanna make sure that these are in your main project page because they will not get bounced out otherwise. So in this case, I've highlighted my delays and reverbs. I'm gonna use Control T to add them to the project. And from here, I'm ready to go. Once again, we are going to want to place a gain plugin on here and probably reduce it by, I don't know, whatever feels good to you. I'm just gonna pick 10 for now because I can't guarantee that my stems are not clipping their meters and that's gonna be a problem. So throw them on. We'll use Command E to open the export dialog. Actually, let me back up here. Make sure to select all of the stems that you want to send out. Okay, now let's Command E. And from here, I would create a new folder. So we'll just call it GH Stems 2. Save format wave, bit depth 24 bit, normalize off and then we're good to go. And I can hit export and then Logic will go ahead and export every single one of these stems and we're ready to go. So that was a lot of information. I tried to keep it quick for you. These are best practices for prepping your tracks for the mastering process. Your mastering engineer will be so thankful to you if you follow these steps. Lander, yourself, whoever will be so thankful. So I highly suggest bookmarking this video. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm creating new posts, new materials, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.